Hallelujah. Oh, it's a glorious morning in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and praise Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
agreement right now. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word says that if any two agree is touching anything on earth, that they should have whatever they ask. So in the name of Jesus, we pray healing for Bill right now. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, healing and a cure in his body. In Jesus' name, we pray healing for Bridget. In the name of Jesus, body, you act and react to the medicine you're supposed to act to. In Jesus' name, a refreshing, a rebuilding. In Jesus' name, healing to Bridget. And we thank you for it, God. Is there anybody else that needs prayer this morning? You need healing in your body? Would you just raise your hand? Look around and see if somebody has their hand lifted up. If you're next to them, would you please lay their, your hand on them? If you're not close to them, then stretch your hand out that way. Let's pray and believe God. Father, we thank you that you're the healer. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. And so we thank you right now for a healing in these mortal bodies. In the name of Jesus, whatever is amiss, whatever is going wrong, in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, be whole. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just thank him for it. Let's just thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, my love, you have been faithful. Oh, my love, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God.
be ever upon them right now, ever upon their family. In Jesus' name. And we give you praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah. This month, we're praying for Greece and we're praying for Pastor Spiros. We're praying for the church and the Bible school in Athens. I tuned in to their church this morning. You know, I, I, I don't speak Greek, but uh, I speak Holy Ghost. <laughs> What an anointed service they had. Hallelujah. We want to pray for that church in Athens and the Bible school there. You know, Europe, uh, it, it's had uh, uh, an even tougher, if you can imagine, shut down an economic impact than the U.S. has. And they're in need of prayer. And so we want to pray for that church and school in Athens, the church and school in Thessalonica, the, uh, uh, the, home, the home church in uh, Crete church and school in Albania. Hallelujah. Father, we just lift this ministry up to you right now. We thank you, Father, for moving by your spirit. We thank you, Lord, that more will be trained this year than any other year in Greece and in Albania. We thank you, God. We thank you for your glory will go around the world. We thank you, dear God, for your moving on your people. Thank you, Father, for your raising people up, raising up the office of the prophet raising up the apostles, raising up the pastors, raising up the evangelists, raising up the teachers, raising up the helps ministers. We thank you, Father, that you're building strong churches all over the Mediterranean. And Father, we just give you praise and honor and glory. Thank you for what you're doing there. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Amen. Amen. Well, why don't you tell two or three people that, and then you can be seated. to God. Well, it, it's not too bad. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's cold up here and almost bearable back there. Who? Okay. All right. Is that all I need to know about that? Or? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let, let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. I'll just let you stay seated. We're going to pray for Brother James Glenn. You know, Brother James and, and Peggy uh, are uh, charter members of the church. They, they uh, showed up the second week of Trinity Fellowship Church. You know, the first week it was, it was uh, Billy, Carol, and family. And the next week, two other people showed up, and it was James and Peggy. And uh, we know Peggy's already gone to her reward just recently. But uh, Brother James is uh, living in Houston and uh, um, his daughter requested that we pray for him this morning. So let, let's, let's uh, do nothing further until we pray about that. Heavenly Father, we just pray right now for Brother James Glenn. God, we thank you. Thank you for the ministry that they, that they have pushed on. Thank you for the power that you have had them carry. Thank you for what they've done to the body of Christ. We pray right now for strength for his body, soundness of mind. In Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord, that with long life, he will be satisfied. And when he's satisfied, he'll go right through the gates. And we give you praise yeah. and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I started to say it, feel, it doesn't feel too bad. We, we have that back unit is off uh, and not working, and uh, they're having to order a part. And uh, we waited two days for somebody to come tell us they're going to order a part, but uh, nonetheless, they're ordering a part, and so that's what that back unit is waiting on. So if you get too warm in the back, if you move up to the front, we got these cranked way down to try to compensate for the back, and they don't do that uh, real good. The foyer um, is uh, just being flaky, okay? That's a, 
That's all I know to say about the four. It's just flaky. It was on all night, and it was supposed to be helping us out. And at some point in time, it, it quit blowing cold air. And then uh, we were in prayer today in the prayer room, and we prayed, God, help us chill these rooms. And then that one started blowing cold air again, all right? So don't go sit in a foyer, but what I'm saying is uh, it's working. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But move, there's plenty of room up here if you get warm in the back. And uh, we, we had some, some units that, that were doing their best to kind of push this air that way, but uh, um, they were kind of obstacles. And uh, so we've, we've moved those out until, until later. But it, I, it's pretty cool up here, isn't it? Is it? Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't ask Kiva, you know. She, she's always cold. She's, you know, yeah, yeah, that's true. Carla, too. They're always cold, no matter what. Praise God. Let me give you some other announcements besides Kiva's temperature, okay? <laughs> that's the big one, but here's some other announcements. There's more going on. The uh, Word Care Healing Center this Thursday is going to be at 2, okay? So it's at 2 o'clock this Thursday. Right in the, if the air is working okay, in the back of this auditorium. It, and w it's going to be, amen? amen? I mean, by Thursday, come on, we can stretch our faith at least through Thursday, can't we? Yes. By Thursday, how about by Wednesday? By Wednesday, <laughs> it will be fixed. It, it will have whatever it needs in Jesus' name. God's going to give them wisdom. We, we had a good time. Uh, um, the, the, the guy that they sent out didn't get here till 430 in the afternoon. And I'd already, I'd been calling, I had been calling all day. And I said, uh. I, I ain't paying the after five deal, you know, <laughs> and they said, no, don't worry about that, and I said, I'm not, I'm not paying the Saturday price either, and they said, no, don't worry about that, and so he got here at 4.30, and uh, then there was uh, our, our uh, church mascot, uh, a fox on the roof, and it just happened to be a uh, air-conditioned repairman that was afraid of foxes, so <laughs> amen, that's okay. You know, uh, uh, Selena was up here, and uh, she said uh, he don't want to do anything because he's afraid of the fox. I said, you keep him here. I'll be right up there. And so I got here as quick as I can because um, no fox was going to stop us from having our repairman. <laughs> but uh, anyways, that was quite the adventure. Youth camp money and permission slips, uh, well, we, we'll probably quit announcing that because it really passed due, uh, but if uh, maybe you made special arrangements if you did, or maybe you just need to talk to Charity about a special arrangement, please feel free to talk to her. If you forgot your permission slip, you probably have already talked to her about that. And then this year's Vacation Bible School is July 12th through 15th. It's from 6 to 8.30. And the theme is Spy Kids, and we, need, we really need transporters. I think we may have three or four signed up, and we really need more than that, okay? And so if you can help with that, please sign up. And uh, it's, uh, I didn't say the time, did I? 6 to 8.30 all those days. And so as a transporter, your job, you'd sit in here in the beginning with the kids that you're transporting and a partner, and then you would take them to whatever station they're supposed to go in, drop them off at that station for 20 minutes, and, and then you take them to another station, drop them off for 20 minutes. But we really need that, okay? We really need people to come forward and say, you know, I can do that. I can transport kids from one place to another. And then I think maybe Kingdom Kids also need some help. I'm not sure. I need to talk to Janet about that. But I believe Kingdom Kids could use some extra help with the little kids. They don't usually go as far. I think there's only two stations that is outside of their room that they go to. And that's the three, four, and five-year-olds. So even if you don't usually work with kids or usually uh, not part of the children's department, we need extra people because we're going to bust some kids in. We're going to bring kids uh, from as far as we can go get them. We've already passed out flyers and invitations for them. We're going to bring them in here because we want them to be saved. We, we want them to, to be blessed, right? And, uh, you know, because some of these kids, this may be that opportunity for them. And so we're going to make the best of it. How many of you can believe with me for some transporters? Amen. Amen. We need some people. Hallelujah. And then there's flyers out there. So if you have a place, maybe your job site where you work would let you put up a flyer, then please grab one of those flyers. Or maybe, you know, you've seen the neighbor kids jumping on the trampoline or jumping on your dog, whatever they're doing. Uh, 
give them a flyer and, and get them to jump on over here. So there's some flyers out there. And then um, the memorial service that, that uh, we have been anticipating, Brother Scott Bednich's memorial service, January, I mean, sorry, Saturday. <laughs> Saturday, June 26 at 10 a.m., and it's at Emmanuel Baptist Church, okay? Emmanuel Baptist Church. Uh, if you don't know where that is, find Oaks, Oaks Dead Ends, into Emmanuel Baptist Church. You can't miss it, okay? It's a beautiful church. And uh, it's at 10 a.m., June 26, all right? And uh, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful service and just a, a tribute to uh, uh, what uh, Jesus did through Scott uh, for this church and the entire community. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It's good to get together for those things, you know. Yes. It is. Hallelujah. You know, you can see a lot of times as a testimony uh, of what we strive for. You know, you can see as a testimony when you attend these, these uh, uh, people that are blood-bought, you know, these people that are sanctified, these people that are on fire for the Lord and doing something for God. You go to one of those memorial services of somebody like that, and it just inspires you to do a little bit more. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. So, you ready to give this morning? Amen. Are uh, you ready to give this morning? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's bring in the tithes and offerings unto the Lord. Glory to God. Do you know there's a scripture in the Bible? Maybe you know it, and I'll, I'll say if you know it, just go ahead and, and help me out. But it goes something like this. Uh, the Lord loves a, a cheerful giver. All right. How many of you are happy today? Woo-hoo! Amen. Amen. If, if, if you got your money in your hand and you're not happy, then put it back in your pocket. <laughs> Get happy and then pull it back out, all right? Because the Lord loves what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's, let's say our family prayer. Are you ready? Hold it up to the Lord. Let's pray our prayer. Heavenly Father, according to your word, you supply seed to the sower. Thank you for giving me seed to sow. This is my seed. I sow into the kingdom of God. I sow because I love God and want to see Trinity Fellowship Church continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. As I sow, I take part in every life changed, person blessed, and ministered to by this church. According to your word, I give, and it is given back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I thank you, Lord, that as I sow my seed, good opportunities are coming my way. Opportunities of savings, investments, over time... Better jobs, raises, bonuses, and promotions are coming my way. The windows of heaven are open because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for your favor upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. In Jesus' name, amen, or so be it. Thank you. 
Today's a day, one year ago, they got married right up here. Wow, praise God. So y'all have to get out that freezer burn first tier of cake, and you have to at least eat a bite. Amen. You did. You already did that. Did it taste good? Are you letting us all out first? All right. All right. Amen. Praise God. Well, you can be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's good to have anniversaries, doesn't it? Amen. Amen. That's a sign of success, you know. (laughs) That's a sign of success. Praise God. Hallelujah. And God intended for us to have success, didn't he? Yes, he did. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, I'm grateful you're here. You look good this morning. Glory to God. I, I believe everybody this year, especially since it was so hard last year, is, uh, you know, trying to get out of town whenever they can. And uh, I'm so thankful that, that they can do that. You know, you need to do that once in a while. Amen. Uh, you need to get out of town here and there. You need to go see some distant relatives, or you just need to go somewhere and do nothing. 
Y'all ever just go somewhere and do nothing for a couple of days? Amen. Praise God. You need to go sit on a beach or something. I don't know. Just go and do nothing for a little while. Refresh. Hallelujah. But be in prayer for all those that aren't here uh, this morning and couldn't make it. I want to first turn, if you can find, uh, I believe we'll look at 1 John chapter 2. Let's look at 1 John chapter 2. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we get started this morning. Father, we just thank you that you are great as we just sang about. You are so good as we also sang about. Thank you, Father, for your love in which you loved us. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross, to be our substitute, to take our sins. For in him we've become your righteousness. Father, thank you for being our dad, for being our very own father. Thank you for bestowing on us your gifts and your pleasure. Thank you for working your mighty works in us, through us, and around us. Thank you, God, for accepting us into your kingdom and into your family. Father, thank you for your word, your instructions that you've given us. Thank you, Father, that there's power and life in your word. We endeavor, Father, not only to lean in and to listen and to hear what you would have to say, but also to be a doer of that word. Thank you for the light it brings. We give you praise and honor and glory, and we're in faith believing for revelation from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, this You may have seen uh, on Facebook what we were going to talk about today. This month, the month of June, has been called uh, Pride Month by the world. And I know that that carries a lot of meaning. For the world, it actually specifically means pride and desiring to commit homosexuality. It means pride and desiring to dress like another sex. Pride in mutilating your body to look like another sex, or pride in taking hormones to appear like you're something you're not. I heard of a, a woman that said this about going to church, and uh, uh, she was in a homosexual relationship, and she said, I don't want to go to church because I know they won't accept this person that I love. I, I, I don't want to go there because they won't accept me. And I don't know, maybe there's, there's places similar to that. I, I don't know. But it, it seems like a lie from the enemy. And so if, if we have this morning anybody uh, committing acts of homosexuality in particular, committing acts of trying to change uh, uh, what your gender appears to be, I want you to know that we'll love you, and you can come to this church. Amen? Say amen. 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 Praise God. Now, we'll never accept the sin. We're not supposed to accept sin. Sin doesn't become right because a social agenda says it's right now. You don't evolve into sin. That would be devolving. You know, no, sin is never right. Hey, but we love the people. Love the people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And want to minister to people. Thank God forevermore. And so if you're watching and this, this is what you're involved in, this is what you've been doing, don't let Satan lie to you and say people won't accept you or love you. The people will love you. And people will accept you into the body of Christ if you're born again. Glory to God forever. But... Some, you know, people are committing the sin of homosexuality and there are churches that are going so far in acceptance that they're accepting sin. And it's not just that sin, that just happens to be the flavor of the month. But it's not just that sin, there's other sins that churches are openly accepting. I heard of a church as in... uh, uh, Somewhere up in Washington State, a uh, charismatic church. In fact, uh, I'm embarrassed to say that, that uh, uh, I believe I was told that uh, the pastor of it is a, a Rama graduate. And one of our young airmen 
out of this church and looking for a church, you know, since he had a pastor that had been a Ray McGrath, thought, hey, you know, I'll go up there and get me a Ray McGrath pastor. And uh, the first me- men's meeting they ever went to, that he ever went to, to, for the camaraderie of Christian men coming together and learning about the Lord. Men, if you've never been to one of ours, we have it once a month from uh, September uh, through May. We meet once a month. The men meet over here. Women meet over here. And the men get together and we eat manly food and talk about manly things. Amen. And, and they uh, eat fluff and talk about fluffy things. All right. <laughs> It's not true. Oh, all right. Well, I never been. I never been privy to it. But Charity says it's not true. I've never been. Inv- I'm never going to be invited. I bet. But uh, anyways, I'll be a good party crasher. But uh, uh, but anyways, man, if you've never been to it, you should come out. All right. It, it, it's good. You get fed spirit and, and uh, soul and body. It's good. But um, this airman went to this particular men's group thinking that it's like ours and it's going to have the camaraderie of Christian men getting together. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. And so they're going to get together and hear about the word and uh, got there to the men's group and and they pulled out the booze. All the men started drinking it up. I mean, it's crazy. So, you know, uh, but Pride Month is specifically... What they've defined it as is Pride Month is specifically about the sin of homosexuality or the sin of trying to to, to, uh, morph your body into looking like a different sex. And it's sin. It's sin. I mean, it it, it is. It, it It doesn't change with the times. It's always been sin. People practiced it for lots of years. You know, you could go back to, to Sodom and Gomorrah, and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit, but, but the sin's been around just like any other sin. But, you know, if you're saved, we're, we're going to accept people that are saved into the body of Christ, aren't we? No matter what. Now, that goes for fornication, too. You know, sometimes it, Christians will get on the other side of the ditch, and they'll say, well, you know, homosexuality, that's sin, but then there's fornication, and that's sin. No, they, they both sin. <laughs> they both sin. Fornication is any, is any sexual activity outside the covenant of marriage. And I believe we've been a little bit confusing on this issue because sometimes Christians have said, well, uh, sex is, is, is defined by God as supposed to be between a man and a woman. And that's actually only half correct. Sex is defined by God isn't supposed to be between any man and any woman. It's supposed to be between a husband and wife. That's it. That's it. I see the devil pushes people into extremes in thinking that sex equals love and love equals sex. And so if you don't have sex, you're not in love. Or that you can't love. Doesn't he? You see that. You see the enemy push people, well, you know, I love this person, therefore it has to become physical. Why? But if you believe your Bible, you take that out of the equation and you say, no, that's only between a husband and wife. I'm supposed to love everybody. Isn't that true? I'm supposed to love everybody. Everybody I'm supposed to love, but that activity is supposed to be between a husband and wife. Isn't that so? Well, once you know that, you're free to love everybody, aren't you? You're free to love everybody. But the enemy pushes people off into these things, and, and you have things, uh, 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 pedophilia. You know, yes, there's some derangement and some, some, sometimes some wiring that was never right. A lot of times they went through that as a child and, and grow up and think, you know, in their mind that's what you have to do. But, you know, one of the things that they say, one of the things that pedophiles will say is, I loved them. I loved them. Well, so somewhere along the way, people have started thinking that love and sex are synonymous terms, and they're not. Love is what we have for everyone, but the other is only between a husband and wife. It's not between every man and every woman, and it's certainly not between women and women, and it's certainly not between men and men. Does that make sense, or am I just talking? 
Well, it's the Word of God. <laughs> it's the Word of God. And so we can't, we can't confuse people on that. And we also can't lift up homosexuality and say, well, that's a bigger sin than fornication. That's a bigger sin than adultery. No, it's all immoral. It's all immorality is what it is. It's sexual sin, no matter how you look at it. So I'm going to give you three basic points to say why we don't celebrate pride. The celebration of pride is devilish. The seducing spirits that try to get people to celebrate pride. And, and, and if you can't even sense that spiritually, which I know you can, but you could see it, and how could you turn one of God's covenant signs into the sign of your pride? How are you going to say a rainbow represents pride? Well, a rainbow is what God put in the sky to say, I'm not going to flood the earth again. A rainbow is what's in the throne room of God. You realize when God made that covenant with man not to flood the earth again, the sign he put into heaven is a sign out of his throne room. So when you see a rainbow in the sky, what you're seeing is part of the throne room. You're seeing a sign straight out of where God sits in heaven. Hallelujah. And wouldn't it be like the devil to defy that sign? Wouldn't it be like the devil to say, no, that sign means pride. The very thing that lifted Lucifer up when he said, I'll rise above God. Mm. Well, I, I'm just going to give you three points here. Why we don't celebrate pride. One, what does God think about pride? Two, why not be proud of sin? I'll tell you why. And three, pride in a certain sin is actually not an original idea. I'm going to show you scripture. It's actually not an original idea. So have you found 1 John yet? All right, 1 John 2, 16. I'm going to read it in the New King James. Now, don't get quiet on me today. Don't get quiet on me. You, you know, we, we, can, we, can, uh, <laughs> we can have our little Facebook d debates, <laughs> but they don't amount to anything if you don't know any scripture. You know what I mean? It, this stuff needs to be in the body of Christ. We need scripture. Don't tell me that that's wrong unless you show me scripture. You know what I'm saying? So we can have this undercurrent of knowing something's wrong but not wanting to offend anybody. Or we can have this undercurrent of wanting to argue with everybody and just tell everybody it's wrong. Or we can show from the word of God, is it wrong or is it right? And that's what we need to do. We need to see in the word. And pride's a dangerous thing. I'll just tell you that right now. Pride's very dangerous. Very dangerous. I'm going to read it in New King James and I'll read it in the Amplified. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes... And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Again, did you hear that? It's not of the Father. It's not from God. It's of the world. It's of this fallen state, this fallen place that we live in. And our Bible says that Satan right now is actually the God of this world. Adam forfeited it. Adam committed high treason, gave it over to him. But God will get it back again. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Amplified, it says it like this, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, craving for sensual gratification, and the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, and the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources, or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world itself. Pride's a dangerous thing. Let me say that again. Pride's a dangerous thing. Pride... Pride causes things that you don't want in your life. Pride causes things you don't want in your home. Pride, pride's not a good thing. You know, now we use it sometimes for a good reference, right? We'll use it for say, you know, you need to have pride in, in, in your work. You know, and you need to have pride in, in what you do. But you know what we're talking about there. We're talking about putting your best foot forward, aren't we? We're, we're actually saying you need to do it in excellence is what we're saying. You, you need to do it to the best, Right? You need to do it how the Bible says, not like uh, um, yeah, behind the master's back you do it one way, in front of the master you do it another way, but you need to do it like you know God's watching all the time. Isn't that the truth? And pri pride is actually, you know, that's the way we might say it, but it's probably not the best way to say it. 
I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to try to change the way you talk. If you want to keep using that word, uh, go for it, it, you know. But I'm just saying that that's how we usually mean that. We don't usually mean it in a negative fashion. You don't usually mean when you say that you're proud of your kid. You, 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 most parents don't usually mean, well, that's because I made you. I'm proud because I made that. <laughs> right? That's not usually what you mean, is it? What you usually mean by that is I'm pleased. I'm pleased. I'm pleased in what they just said. I'm pleased in who they are. I'm, I'm pleased in the kind of person they are. I'm pleased that, that they let Jesus shine through them. That's what you usually mean, right? And, and, and I just explain those because I don't, I don't want us to get confused with that, all right? But let, let's look in Proverbs here. Let's look in Proverbs 16 first. And then we'll go backwards and forwards again. But let's look in Proverbs 16. Let me, let me show you a few scriptures in Proverbs. Proverbs 16, verse 18 says this, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. So pride goes before destruction. What that means is if you see pride, right behind it's destruction. Pride goes before. That means in front of. So whenever you see pride, right behind there's destruction. Right behind there. Here's pride. Well, there's destruction right there. Here comes destruction. Well, you know, you can see that in earthly things. You can see that in natural things, can't you? You can see, I, I, what was I watching? Uh, um, beat Bobby Flay. You know what it is? Beat Bobby Flay. Flay? Flay. Flay. All right. Beat Bobby Flay. Any of you ever seen Beat Bobby Flay? Now, it's not talking about punching him out, but, <laughs> but if you can't cook, maybe just go punch him. I don't know. But Beat Bobby Flay. It's a cooking competition. And in this cooking competition, these judges, they were watching this other guy who was supposed to be the one. He's supposed to be the one to beat Bobby Flay. And, uh, and so they're making this dish, and this guy said something. He said, I hope he's not getting overconfident. I hope he's not getting overconfident. You know what another word for getting overconfident is? Pride. Why, why is he hoping he's not getting overconfident? Because he wants him to have his eye on the prize. He wants him to still put everything into it. You remember that? I don't know. If, I guess it maybe was a book at some point in time. But, you, you know, Bugs Bunny redid it. And so it was a cartoon then. Right? The tortoise and the hare. You know, and, and Bugs Bunny. I'm going to give it to you from Bugs Bunny's point of view. I hate to ruin a story, but I'm going to do it. And, and so Bugs Bunny, he thought it was nothing to beat the turtle. Right? It's nothing to beat the turtle. So he thought he could take a nap. He thought he could do this. He thought he could eat dinner. He thought he could do all these other things except run and finish over the finish line, right? And so what happened in the end? Somehow his pride got in the way, even though he was way faster than that turtle. And the turtle did what? The turtle won. Am I the only one that's ever seen that cartoon? <laughs> I'm glad I could paint that picture for myself. All right, look at Proverbs 8. <laughs> Proverbs 8, verse 13. Listen to this. It says, the fear of the Lord. And you know that word fear is not, man, I'm so afraid God's about to smack me around. No, 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 he loves you. He's, he's, he's gone out of his way to explain his love for you. But that fear is a reverence. That fear is, man, God's holy. Man, that fear is like, that's the creator. Man, that's my God. You know, the fear of the Lord is, listen to this, to hate evil. To hate evil. So uh, that's an indication right now that some people don't have that reverence because they don't hate evil. So the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. But listen, it goes on. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Now look at Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. So in reverencing God... You actually want to hate pride. Now, you don't want to hate people that are operating pride, but you want to hate pride. And, and so when it comes knocking on your door, you want to shun that. You want to get out of that because you want to hate that. Proverbs 11, verse 2, it says, When pride comes, then comes shame. Then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. I mean, isn't it, isn't it such a privilege? I, I, I mean, isn't it really just a privilege to be around humble people? I, I mean, to be in the presence of somebody that, that is just humble. 
You know, and, and there is like false humility. False humility is when you think 